free throw line? It feels good, you know. Hard work pays off, and we we shoot free throws every day, and we know they're gonna we're gonna fall eventually. So, did you exhausted? Played what? Did you forty four minutes, right? Or did you play the whole game? No, I, I think I think I came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> minutes, you were driving the truck all game long. How do you feel now? Are you exhausted? Or I mean, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm good. <laughs> we practice harder than we, so. Is it, little, is it a little bit exciting? I mean, yes, you guys acknowledge you should have played a little bit better, but is a game like this at least a little bit exciting to play in? Of course. Any, I mean, I think all just playing in general is is, is fun to do. When, whether we're up, you know, because you know we always know we're in the game, and and we as a team is just fun to play with each other. We have good chemistry. The first half, they they just came out on fire uh, in their first four three pointers. Were they quality shots? Were you guys feel like you weren't defending well enough? What did you see? A little bit. Of, I mean, yeah, I, I would say a little bit both. Like you know, they were getting some decent looks, but I mean, it wasn't terrible defense. But you know, we we knew we had to be better in the second half, and it, and it, and it showed. Williams hit those four three pointers in the first half. He didn't have a field goal attempt until the second half was halfway through. Can you talk about what uh, you know? I got to cre credit the freshman Xavier. He, you know, they put him on him in the second half, and you know, he he played some good defense, not letting him get a shot, and you know, that's that's big for a young guy to come up and step up like that. You guys, first five game conference winning streak since uh, in over 30 years. How does it feel? It definitely feels good, you know, because I don't know how this program was um, before, and um, over the summer we just really, like he said earlier, we put in a lot of work, and it's it's paying off at the moment. But we're still not where we want to be at. But it's good. Feels good, definitely. Uh, David, this is your uh, third straight game scoring over 20 points. Would you say you're playing your best match more right now? Mm, I, I would say I've, I've been playing way better, but I mean, I just I feel like I've been just playing in our offense. I feel like we always have a guy that's in 20 points, and it's either, you know, whoever steps up that night, you know, with legs out, you know, when he comes back, you know, he could have 20, Q could have 20. So, you know, it's hard for, for the defensive team to match up against us. They got to choose one. I think you got to start off and give uh, Joe a, a ton of credit. I think he did. They were ready to play. Uh, they changed up some things from just two weeks ago in terms of both coverages and offensive stuff and really put us in a tough situation. We weren't ready for some of the stuff, and that, that's my fault. Uh, but give them credit. They played extremely hard, uh, super aggressive in terms of attacking the basket. Got us on our heels there in that first half, and we got in some foul trouble as well. Um, wasn't pretty, but then you got to give our guys credit. You know, They kind of dug in there in the second half and got just enough stops to, to put us in some offensive positions where we could score the ball finally and do what we do, which is defend. And we held them to 38% in the second half, 25% in the overtime, and rebound. And we out-rebounded them 46 to 22. And then the final piece that we do so well is we get to the free throw line, you know, and it makes a big difference. Uh, we didn't score a basket for the last six minutes or in overtime, but we scored 16 points because we're an aggressive, hard-charging team, and, um, and we've gotten better shooting the free throws. You know, So uh, pleased with the win, not pleased with some of the things that we did, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, a, it's something that you got to look at. You know, when we play really well, we can compete with just about anybody. Uh, if we don't play well, we're not going to beat anybody. And uh, what we did today was somewhere in the middle, and then we got to figure out a way to win it. And that's what our guys did. Our guys figured out a way to win that game. They got enough stops. They did some great. Really great defensive possessions in terms of uh, crucial time when we went to our switching all ball screens and handoffs. Uh, the last play to regulation, Mayan did a tremendous job. If Mayan isn't on the ball, that guy gets the shot off. Mayan's the only guy in the gym that could get a block on that shot. And he did a great job of that. So um, we just got to let Mayan know that the game started at 5.30, not 6.30. And if we can do that, we'll be all set. Um, you saw glimpses of what I think he's going to be able to become for us uh, playing for South Florida. David Collins, unbelievable game again. LaQuincy, not one of his best games, but made some big plays for us. Obviously, the free throw line. 
you know, that's a big step for, for him as a leader. And he doesn't play as well as he's accustomed to playing. And you look at it, he gets 12 points and four assists and, and one steal. But he goes to the free throw line, he blocks all that out, and he makes two free throws. Big free throws for us, obviously, with 12 seconds to go. So, um, you know, it's a good step for us. It's a, it's a good win against a team that uh, played extremely hard. You know, Williams was a freshman of the year last year. I think Gardner and Alexis will be neck and neck for freshman of the year this year. Fleming's been playing great for him as a senior. I give them a lot of credit. You know, very similar. Their, their team is very similar to what we were last year. You know, fight, fight, fight. And we just made enough plays to win the game today. Coach, can you talk about the defensive effort on Gardner? He was. He got an early foul trouble, yeah. but he was yeah. pretty much a non-factor. Well, and also Durr's rebounding. Yeah, yeah, I should have mentioned Michael, you know, because uh, what gets lost is one for five from the field. But, you know, he's, uh, as a freshman, to be honest with you, he's probably not supposed to score, you know, <laughs> as, as much as I would like him to. But he gets 13 rebounds for us, five offensive rebounds, eight defensive rebounds. I challenged those big guys, and they responded. We did not rebound well on Thursday night in Dallas, and we went out and won the war the boards 46 to 22 today. We dominated the glass, and Mike was phenomenal, phenomenal on the defensive end, and he guarded Gardner a lot, you know, which is a tough matchup for a, you know for for a seven foot guy, and he did a good job on him. Um, the, the thing with Fleming, uh, Q got in foul trouble. So we had to switch David on to Fleming because I just, he, Fleming, it, Fleming could play for me. He's our kind of guy. He's a hard charging downhill drive and get to the foul line, tough kid. You know, he pokes in at the ball. He got a couple big steals as well. You know, he's very similar to our guards, to be honest with you. So we had to move David on to him because I didn't want Q, we needed Q out there. Um, and then we moved Q on to Williams. Williams hurt us in the first half as well. Uh, we did a great job on Williams in the second half because he didn't make a shot, I don't think. He was four for four from the three at halftime. He ended up four for six. And we did a great job on uh, Fleming in the second half with the switch up with David on him. So we should have had that matchup the first time because the minute we switched it, Quincy did a great job on Williams and. David did an unbelievable job on, on, on Fleming in terms of keeping him in front. He didn't get into the lane like he did. And then the five or six possession that X had him, he did a great job as well because X is really, really good at, at keeping guys out of the paint. You're figuring out ways to win, different ways to win. It's got to be just doing something for the collective confidence of these guys. Well, you know, I, I always say confidence is created by work ethic. Guys, work, our guys work hard. They prepare. You know, we, we're, we're in the, the February, and a wise old coach told me, you know, you got to watch out for February because guys start getting grinded up a little bit and games come and, and you know, you play games. And, and then sometimes the worst thing to have is have a week off in that, in that time because then you get out of rhythm and out of rust or get some, you know, rust on you. So, uh, you know, our preparation is the same, but uh, our guys have really bought into – Putting in the time, uh, getting their bodies back after games, you know, with recovery and rehab, all those things. You know, we talk about living a, you know, a disciplined life and being disciplined in our daily approach. Um, and when you do that, those habits that are formed put you in good position to figure out ways to win games, you know, and, and um, you know, obviously proud of the way the guys have done it. We, our, our assistants made a great suggestion on our coverages on the ball screen stuff, spot on, probably won us the game. But again, the guys have to go out there and execute it. So our guys were fabulous with that as well. Because sometimes when you switch up in the middle of the game, it doesn't go so good. Because we spent two days prepping one way, and then we had to change it on the fly. And the assistants, as I said, did a great job. But you got to have guys that believe in what you're, you're doing in order to get it done, and our guys do. Coach, when do you expect getting it back? And when he comes back, what will that do to Kerr's minutes? Wow, that's like an NBA question in terms of <laughs> rotation and stuff like that. Uh, you know, how many minutes did Mayan play today? 34. 34. Yeah, that's a lot of minutes. That's too many minutes. Got tired. Got tired. He well, he, he didn't play the first half, so that yeah. doesn't count. Those minutes don't count. 
Um, uh, yet, no, his day to day, he's moving around much better. You know, uh, will he be ready on, on Wednesday? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. When it comes to injuries, you know, we talked about it last year, that, that's the doctors, the trainer, and the student athlete. I'm out. I have nothing to say with that. When they tell me they're good to go, then he's got to be ready to practice and play. And, and, and I stay out of that. You know, learned a long time ago to, to get out of that stuff. Um, so when they tell me he's ready to go, then he'll go. If it's Wednesday, then it's Wednesday. If it's next Saturday, it's next Saturday. It's, it's a hamstring. Uh, we got the best trainer in the world. And we also have the, our trainers also very well versed in the hamstring because he was our track trainer. So he's dealt with that quite a bit. And Lex is no sprinter, but he's had the same, you know, injury that other guys have had. So uh, Greg's doing a great job with that. Um, and Mayan's minutes are dependent. When he plays well, then he's going to keep playing more minutes. You know, he's going to keep playing more minutes. We got a pretty good four-man rotation in that in the post, and and Ray Sean's helped us. Um, but you know, Mayan played really well in the second half, and Mike was so dominant on the glass. We had to keep those guys in there. Coach, you had. After the SMU game, you guys had a planes, trains, and automobile adventure. Yeah. Getting back here. Yeah. Got back here really late. Can you talk a little bit about the staff that helped your players with their recovery? Because you had a short turnaround for this game. It was overtime. Game. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and we got the same thing. You know, guys got to be – they'll be in the cold tubs right now. Yeah, we – you know, and again, it's all about the players buying into what we're trying to build here and how we got to do it. And the recovery and the rehab is every bit as, as important as watching film and getting in the gym, you know. And, and we've been through it before, so, you know, the, the next day after the game is a light day, walk through film, more mental focus and approach and game plan than, you know, grind it up on the court. And then the day before the game, you got you to gotta get after it a little bit so the guys are sharp. Um, but, you know, with Greg and, as our trainer and the staff that we have here, Guys do a really good job of taking care of themselves. And there's nothing more important than sleep and the nutrition and rehydrating and all that. And every time I turn around, Greg's got more water and these drip drops and whatever the stuff they put in the water, I, you know, whatever it is. But it seems to be working. Coach, now, now that um, this is behind you, you've gotten it out of the way, you've got a, you've got a huge game with huge implications Wednesday night. Yeah, and the same thing, it's the most important game of the year because it's the only game we're playing. It's the next game. And we've been at that all year long. We're not going to change that philosophy. Today was the most important game that we played all year long. And I said, you know, one of the challenges for our team was we've responded very well uh, to, you know, you guys aren't very good and you're not going to win a lot of games. And we got tough enough kids that they responded very well to that. Today was the first game where, for a couple of days, everybody was telling them, hey, you're pretty good, you know, and you guys are talking about postseason and stuff like that, you know, and how did our guys respond? You know, it was the first time. That's a different, that's a different challenge, you know what I mean? And uh, luckily, we, we were tough enough in the second half to pull it out. So Wednesdays, you know, I, I've always stated, I've never shied away from it. Those games mean a little more. They have to. You know, they have to. Everywhere I've been at, we've had a rival, and that game has always meant a little more. And I think one of the things that we need to do as a program is we need to embrace that. I'm not sure it has been. I, I don't know. I just never got that feel. So that's something that's important to us. I know it's important to them. You know, so we got to make it important to us that that's a, that's a game that uh, means a little bit more. You know, it, it has to. It's a rivalry game. You know, so uh, we got to be ready to go. They're very good. They're very old, veteran team, savvy, experienced team. Uh, and you got to be on your top of the game if you're going to compete with them. Coach, you yep. guys lost a few games because of free throw misses earlier on in the season. How much does it speak to how far this team has come that you guys basically won this game on free throws? Well, you know, like I said, I, I think one of the most important parts of our program is um, we really emphasize uh, the development of the players even during the season. And we spend a lot of time with the guys, and my staff spends a lot of time with the guys, and the guys have bought into spending extra time working on their game. We'd much rather have our players better at the end of the year than me be able to diagram three new plays. 
because the first way is going to help us win more games. And our guys have to buy into that. But those guys have spent, and as I, we've talked about free throws at length in this room, uh, we adjusted a couple guys' free throws. You know, I'm comfortable in doing that with a couple guys, you know. Uh, but then they have to put in the time, and they've done that. But you can go down the list, and every one of our players is a better player today than they were when we opened up the season. And that doesn't happen all the time. You know, that doesn't happen all the time. And um, that, that speaks volume for, again, I got an unbelievable staff because one of the things when I hired these guys, the most we, we have to get players and we have to grow players. You know, and, and those guys are great teachers of the game. And then you have to have guys that want to get better. And we talk about having some self-interest. You know, I want guys, as, as long as that self-interest is aligned with us, be you but aligned with us, then it, then it makes a world of sense and you're starting to see it pay off.